Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Shamsuddin, and um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert uh, a static work cycle, a stationary work cycle, to a progressive work cycle. Um, as you can see, I have my amateur on the view in my viewport, and um, I I'm going to enable a collection here I call accessories. Um, what I have here is just my clothing and uh, the shoes. So um, I think this will be all I'll need for for this tutorial. Okay, um, one of the first thing I, I like to do is to kind of partition my um, viewport, my workspace. So I'm going to drag out these windows like this. I'm going to change this to a top shade. Minimize this and I'm going to change this into a graph editor. Okay, so I'm going to select my my amateur and then switch to pose mode. Right, okay. Um, the first thing we want to do is um, kind of, of course, we're going to be animating using the, the um, root bone. Uh, I think it's unconventional to animate the root bone, and this is because um, you to you know please your your character in a scene, you will need the root bone to um, conveniently place it at any spot on the scene. But with the root bone animated, it's going to be um, difficult to do that. And I don't know if that makes sense. But the way to deal with that is to um, duplicate the root bone. So what I like to do is uh, go to edit mode and then duplicate the root bone. So with the root bone selected, I'm going to hit Shift D, and then just duplicate it, and then I hit Escape to so place that back there. Then um, I will name the duplicate to uh, I guess root main, and um, select the original root bone, and then scale it a bit on the y-axis. So S. So now if I go to pose mode, you should see we have two um, root bones. All right. Okay. So um, now I'm going to go to my um, um, dupe sheet. And first, there's this option here where it says dupe sheet. You switch it to action editor because that's where I have my animations. So um, we can see currently I have it on expression and there's the work cycle. There's this work cycle FK here, so that's what I'm, I'm going to be using. So the, this is my work cycle, I have it 33 frames. So if I hit play, you can see what it looks like. So, uh, alright, so what I would like to do is just duplicate this animation, the whole action. So I hit this button here and it creates a new. Um, action from the previous. So I'm going to name this uh, work circle, I guess, work circle progressive. Progressive. And um, with that done, I'm going to start animating. So there's actually two methods. Um, I'm going to show you the easier method. I want the only problem with this method is just a bit of sliding in it. But I don't think it's noticeable. All right, the first thing you want to do is um go to my first frame. Um, here at my frame one, there's this left foot here. So I like to indicate the farthest point of my left foot with the with the cursor. So um, I put, place this cursor here, and this is the farthest point on the y-axis that is of my left foot of the f left foot here. And what I mean is this. Um, if you if you notice, if I should play the animation you'll notice that the, the, the left foot is withdrawing backwards right so the farthest point will mean the, the, the farthest reach it gets to on the y-axis and this is that is my frame one so I'll indicate that spot roughly at least then what I'll do is then scrub up the timeline to the point where the other leg is at its farthest point. So I think this is the farthest point for this sort of foot. 
So now with the root bone selected, I'm going to select the transform and then move the, the left foot to align with this cursor because that's where it should be. So now just to be clear, I, I zoom in a bit and then see if it's maybe I need to I'm gonna hit period key to change my pivots to the 3D to the cursor rather. Yeah. So I'm gonna move this slightly and then it's there. Oh I forgot to turn on my auto key in. So I'm gonna hit I to put that keyframe there. So now I'm going to indicate this point where my right foot now is. The farthest point from the right foot. I'm going to select. I'm going to use the cursor to indicate. And then move this cursor here on the timeline to on the third frame. It only makes sense that the farthest point for this leg will be my last frame. Since um, the last frame is always reflecting the first frame. What I'll do now again is to uh, use the transform to bring the right leg to this uh, cursor so it aligns. And I think it does align. Maybe a bit. Just, just okay, it's a bit over this line, so I have to push it a notch. Okay. So, um,. Now I think we're almost there. So if I hit play, you can see my um, character is moving. But if you notice, there's, there's a lot of sliding. And one other thing you might have noticed is that when it surpasses the 33, the 33rd um, frame, it uh, goes back to its static circle. Okay, well, a way to fix this is to first we're going to fix the sliding. So how to fix the sliding? We're just we're going to come to the graph editor and um, let me hide everything. Hit A to select all, then H to hide. And I'm going to unhide my Y location, select it, and hit this normalize to bring it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, the interpolation here from Bezier to linear. So um, if I should play the animation here now, you will see there's a bit less sliding. It, it was different from what we had before, but still we have the um, static cycle after the th uh, 33rd frame. All right, and finally to fix this, I would um, have to add a modifier to the graph here. So I'm going to hit this, or hit N to bring this um, property for the graph. And then select the modifier option and then select circle modifier and i'm going to change this before to repeat with offset and then there after as well the same repeat with offset and i think we're going to have an infinite uh working so i think that should be oh and the reason we did this oh one thing we forgot to do was to parent this um root to the main root so I'll hit shift and then select this and then I'll have to go back to edit mode and then control P keep offset and then go back to pose mode and then now you'll see that if I uh, let me turn off the automatic so if I rotate this thing on Z axis you can see I can now um, kind of position my character wherever I want it so that's basically how to um, convert a static work circle to a progressive work circle on that and I think in my next video I'm going to make a tutorial on how to turn a run cycle to a progressive run and I'm going to use a more complicated method so if you're interested in seeing that um, kindly subscribe and stay tuned um, thanks for watching